Basically, I grew up poor family. We fished to eat. We didn't catch anything unless we were gonna eat it. My grandmother, you know, it was actually my great grandfather, but he passed away when I was young. So my, my grandmother took the reins and just taught me how to taught me how to crappie fish with a cane pole back in the day, and it's evolved from there. We're gonna have fun, but it's gonna be competitive. Weather's shaping up to be perfect and the fish are biting. So it's gonna be tight weights. There's gonna be some big weights caught. Uh, it's anyone's ball game, really. Day one, Lake Fork, Crappie Masters. Weatherman lied, wind's blowing about 15. He said it was gonna blow zero to five. So I'm pretty, pretty ticked off at the weatherman. I started crappie fishing, there was no electronics. You just anchor up, put a bunch of poles out and watch rod tips and hope for a bite. And then I got lucky and met one of the engineers at a company that developed Ford facing sonar. And he basically just said, I don't know what you're gonna do with it. You'll figure it out. His exact words, you'll figure it out. So after about two years of figuring out how to utilize this new technology, it opened up all these doors. And I was the first one pretty much to ever catch a fish period on Ford facing sonar, panoptics, live scope, active target. I saw early on the benefits and the possibilities of this. And I, I started posting and sharing all this information with all these people. And that's kind of how I got to be known. And I entered the tournament scene, did well. And now I taught everyone else how to do what I'm doing. So it's not as easy as it, as it once was, but I'm still out here, I'm still loving it, so. And everybody always wins practice, you know, but yesterday was way better than today. I mean, we caught some big fish and we weren't really even trying, but that's what makes tournament fishing so fun is you try your best to mimic what you do in practice, but it's not always guaranteed. And it's so hard to maneuver through these trees. I mean, if you can get a bait in front of them, you can catch them, but it's not that easy. So one thing about fork, it's super intimidating because it all looks the exact same. In this situation, we're fishing this edge that's an open water boat lane and there's timber and we're just staying along these edges basically the whole time. Those, those fish feed out in the middle of the, this open water and they'll come and, and stick on the first piece of cover they find. So that's a little something that would help. Fishing something unique like edges or if there's random trees you know that don't look like they really belong that's a good spot to hold fish all that comes with time on the water and covering water when we fish we've already came 200 yards since you guys have been here i mean anywhere from the east side to the west side you can catch two pound fish on this lake unless you're with us today then they're hard to come by because we're not finding too many Black crappie, something else. This place is loaded with black crappie and it's loaded with white crappie. Black crappie seem to school up more and they fight a little bit harder. And when a black crappie and a white crappie mate or spawn together, they have a tendency to grow huge. A lot of these giant three and four pound crappie people catch are actually hybrids. We're catching bigger fish than we ever have. It's more competitive than it's ever been. But now, you know, it's more of a sport. They're easier to catch than ever before. That doesn't mean all of them bite, but now you can see what's going on under the water. It's making crappie fishing more like bass fishing, more of a sport and not more of, let's just keep everything we catch and go fillet it. Yeah, fork. So fork came up on the schedule. It gave a lot of people opportunity because a lot of people have never fished this lake with, with these new electronics. And it's something unique. You know, Fork has been known for one of the best bass lakes in the country, and here we are catching some humongous crappie out of it. And I got a big one right here. Ooh! Nah, that's not gonna help it. Hey, Jay. We have to find two pounders. If we do not find two pounders, we might as well not even go to the weigh-in. I couldn't really tell because it was down in that, in that tree. There seems to be a lot more fish up off the bottom. They're, they're starting to show themselves. Yeah. The wind's been a big deal. And you just haven't seen that many fish. And in the last 10 minutes, there's fish everywhere. So I don't know if the wind had them on the bottom 
or the sun or what it was. But here's another decent fish. Yeah, this will help. This is a this might be a tournament fish. Maybe. Here he comes. Boosh! No. Getting a little too excited. Social media is the most important thing of my job. Most important part of my job. I mean, if a big fish is caught in Florida, I know about it same day. That's gonna be a big thing going forward. I mean, that's the future. When we're 80, we're still gonna be on social media, I bet. There's a lot of good anglers out there that are just as good as I am, but they don't have a social media. That's what kicked my career off, social media. So it's competitive, but anyone can do it. Given the time, the luck, you gotta have some luck. You know, anyone's life can change in one fish. You gotta be ready to capitalize on the moment. These icons, like I looked up to Bill Dance, Jimmy Houston, you know, I, I've since became friends with some of these people. And by social media, you know, I'm getting some chatter and people are starting to compare me to these people just off social media and crappie fishing. So it's pretty cool. Here he comes. Not gonna help us, but it might help us right now, but it's not gonna help us if we wanna win this tournament. Bigger than those others. These fish have been swallowing the baits. We got two of our biggest fish swallowed it and they're bleeding like crazy, so we're just hoping we can keep them alive, you know, until time. That's how hungry these fish are. Extremely satisfied with how today went. If we if we do the same thing we did today tomorrow. 1706 taking the lead. It would be hard to beat us. Uh, we covered a lot of water. We did not see a whole lot of big giant fish, even though we got a, a team in front of us that weighed a heck of a stringer. 1773. If they do 17 and a half tomorrow, the leaders as well, they deserve every dollar they get. Yeah, we started this morning. Clock hit seven o'clock. I had a two pounder. Well, it wasn't even, I had a 190 in my sight and I went to drop on it. And my partner's like, I don't even see your bait. And I looked up, he was looking at a completely different fish than I was. That was about six foot under the surface. So instead of dropping on the 190, I dropped on the bigger one, which happened to be 211. And put it in the net and immediately dropped back. Caught a 190, that initial fish that I was looking at all within the first minute of the tournament. We've never had a start that good, ever. <laughs> good start. Great start. There's still one more down there. Like I said, I don't know how big it is, but I'm gonna drop it and see. Nothing takes away than time on the water. You can watch all the YouTube videos you want about how to crappie fish, but until you get out on the water and spend time staring at these screens and using these lures, you just don't know. Yeah, so that fish just hit me. It's only about a 10 inch or it came off the bottom. So the live sonar, a lot of people think it hurt the, the fishing because they are somewhat easier to catch and, and a lot of people are keeping a lot of fish. But now we've realized how not easy it is, but how it's opened up all these doors to catch these large fish. And people are understanding, not just me, but a lot of people are understanding we need to let these fish go. You know, it's not just we're gonna go out there and catch every fish, you know, we, we get on the line and throw in the cooler and go home and clean it. And it starts with it starts with the individual. You know, I've been letting them go for five years now, big ones. People thought I was crazy. 
Now we realize, hey, there's a lot more bigger fish than we thought. We need to take care of them because if we do not let these fish go, we can cause a, a major issue on certain lakes, you know, especially smaller lakes, so. Every once in a while, you'll get something in a tree and you know it's a fish. You just can't tell how big it is. And then you drop down and it reveals itself. I try not to catch too many small ones on tournament days. And you see me drop on a lot of fish and then pull it away from them when I figure out that they're not big enough. But it's hard to, it's hard to see a, a fish, especially if it's sitting behind a big stump like this. I mean, you just, a lot of times you just gotta guess. All right, Jay. I'm ready. Nope, small. I think a lot of people are struggling right now. These fish are on the bottom and it's really, really kind of difficult to see them. A lot of times there's just a little bump on the bottom and if I think it's a fish, I'll drop down on it and I'll give it five seconds. And if that fish doesn't move or what I think is a fish doesn't move, then I'll just move on to the next one. I've dropped on 50 today that weren't fish, but I probably dropped on 50 that were fish. You might start here and there's not a single fish and you come back at noon and there's fish everywhere. Well, it's not because the fish move in, it's they're already there, but they're on the bottom. I get all the time, how do you used to catch fish before live scope or active target? And I'm like, well, I, I just jigged every tree. Just because you can't see them doesn't mean they're not there. As far as a vision for the future, I think there is a market for like individuals. And until recently, crappie fishing was nothing. It was, you know, grandpa and overalls going out in a flat bottom boat with a paddle. And But now the future is like, we can have full-time professional fishermen. Five years ago, I was working a corporate job. Now I'm a full-time fisherman. Last year, I could have lived on my salary or my money I made just in tournament winnings. I hope it continues because who knows, 10 years from now, we might be seeing individual crop, professional crappie fishermen traveling throughout the country instead of these team tournaments. I mean, two years ago, I didn't know what I was gonna do, and now I'm, I'm fully convinced I'm gonna retire fishing. This is our first crappie masters on the home pond. We knew if we could get 17 on y'all's scale, we would be great. We stuck in there, we made every bite count. Um, we, did, we didn't leave anything out there that we could have put in the boat that we feel like we needed. Uh, we had two pounders across the board. He, he, he fished super clean, like every hook set mattered this, this time. And uh, if you like crappie fishing and you're not fishing a tournament like this on this magnitude and feeling those feelings and emotions, uh, you're missing out. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a great feeling. Don't ever let anyone tell you you can't. You know, I had people telling me my whole life, it's too hard, that's unreachable, that's too expensive. Just get a job, just get a normal job. I mean, I bought into it. I worked the corporate world for 11 years. You know, and then as fate would have it, I ended up losing my job and then realizing the stream of fishing is a possibility. 16, 16, total weight. 3389. So I had those people my whole life telling me I can't, and here I am. So that's all, you know, that's my biggest advice. Don't listen. Your champions today, Josh Jones and Josh Reynolds. Wow.